This material is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends, collection. This material was originally recorded on December the 13th, 1970, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, at the National Cowboy Hall of Fame and Western Heritage Center. It is a recording of the ceremonies of the dedication of the End of the Trail statue and memorial. This material is being re-recorded on January the 6th, 1986, for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. These ceremonies were held in connection with the 1970 National Final Rodeo, which was held in Oklahoma City that year. We're gathered here over the joy of great artists, the work they have done to remember and capture our own past, that we will not forget it. We are here gathered over the joy of the Payne Kirkpatrick Memorial, so graciously given, that will indeed help us to remember. But we are gathered here also in pain, pain by which we realize through this art medium that we have pushed human beings. We have pushed the red man from sea to shining sea. We have pushed him inordinately. He has been in pain. And we ask forgiveness for our infliction of that pain. And may we remember that we've done it by looking at this statue. For it is full of the pathos and the tragedy of the greatness of this red man who though he is bowed and bent, is bowed and bent with all of the courage that makes for humanity. Give us the strength in our day, memorializing this occasion, not to do it to another generation. And may we thus celebrate this joy, remembering also the pain of the past that our future will overcome it. Amen. This memorial that we are dedicating here today has a history that is 100 years old. James Earl Frazier had been a boy in South Dakota. He never got the West out of his mind or his bloodstream, nor the words he had heard an old trapper speak. Soon the Plains Indian would be pushed to the ocean shores, and that would truly be the end of the, his trail. James Fraser's greatest works carried the theme of the West. Statues of Meriwether, Meriwether Lewis, Captain Clark, Daniel Boone, Audubon, Lincoln, the Buffalo Indian Head Nickel, and of course, the end of the trail, ranging in many sizes from miniature to the heroic in size. In 1913, Fraser married one of his sculpture students, Laura Garden. Laura Fraser's creative concept, like that of her husband's, was enormous. The Frasers, in their 50 years of sculpturing, left America some of our greatest historical and art lessons. The Frasers' kind, like other pioneers honored here, in this shrine are gone forever. James Earl Fraser died in 1953, Mrs. Fraser in 1967. Dean Crakel had visited Laura Fraser in 1962. He was interested in, the, in acquiring the Oklahoma Run panel. He was interested in, his dean, dean was then director of the Gilcrease Institute. Dean brought his ad admiration for the Frasers and his relationship with Laura when he came to the National Cabo Hall of Fame in November 1964. In the fall of 1967, the National Cabo Hall of Fame acquired seven tons of models, papers, and equipment of the Frasers. This collection contained commissions for the Frasers amounting to one half million dollars. This acquisition was made possible through the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Johnny Kirkpatrick. 
After bringing the Fraser's collection here, it was realized that the greatest work by James Earl Fraser was not in the collection, the original end of the trail. This 20-foot symbol of the closing of our frontier was in a park in Visalia, California. Dean Krakel made his first of several trips to Visalia in February of 1968 and began negotiation with the Tulare County Historical Society and the Board of County Supervisors to trade a casting in bronze for the original model. The moving of the statue, the long period of preliminary restoration and, <coughs> and finished restoration was begun by Leonard McMurray and completed by Caesar Contini. The underlying support for the end of the, of the trail project came from Mr. and Mrs. Dean A. McGee in the form of a grant of $50,000. This made possible restoration, making the molds for casting, and the work on the replacement statue for Visalia. The statue was first housed in a building worth $10,000, given to us by the Star Building Company of your city. This building provided a workshop for this great restoration project. The major step in fulfillment of the concept was giving of almost a half million dollars by Mrs. Nona S. Payne in memory of her late husband, David D. Payne of Miami, Texas, and Mr. and Mrs. John Kirkpatrick of Oklahoma City. This is the facility we are dedicating here today. Most of the persons who had principal roles in the project are here today. Before I introduce them, I want to recognize those who are close to the National Cowboy Hall of Fame but will not speak here. I'd like to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Albert Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, the chairman of our board of trustees. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Fred Dressler, who incidentally have just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, and Mr. Dressler, a member of our Board of Trustees. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. J.B. Saunders. In the audience, please. And Mrs. Joel McRae. Mr. and Mrs. William G. Kerr, Mr. and Mrs. Rex Nicholson, must be late for breakfast, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Luther T. Delaney, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Bill House, and Bill House is one of our trustees. I think Mrs. House is not here. Oh, she is here. Great. Mr. and Mrs. E. H. Shoemaker. Mr. Shoemaker is our trustee. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Glenn Ferris. Mr. Ferris is our trustee. Mr. and Mrs. Chester Paxton. Chester Paxton is our trustee. Incidentally, we have in our audience one of our great friends and great Westerner, Rex Allen. And uh, I know he is here. I hope he is here with us. Ace Reed, the great Western cartoonist. Is Ace Reed come in? He's here. Yeah. And a few uh, special out-of-town guests are Mr. and Mrs. Paul Bowers, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Gordon of Miami, Texas. <clears throat> we also have Representative Bob Price uh, from Miami, Texas. <clears throat> and uh, those uh, directly related to the project, uh, Robert Hall is the president of the Star Construction Company and Mr. Eddie Hooper, the vice president of that, who's been so kind to us. We're widely known sculptor, Mr. Leonard McMurray. And 
the men who have made the big moves with the Fraser Collection, first from Westport, Connecticut, and then the end of the trail from Visalia, California, uh, Juan Menchaca, this one here, and Mrs. Menchaca, a very, very great member of our staff, Richard Muno and Mrs. Muno. Jean Dillahay and Dean Crakel and Mrs. Crakel. And now your mayor, Mr. James H. Norick. Thank you very much, sir. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This will be very short because if you're as uh, chilly out there with this Colorado weather that Mr. Ackerman brought with him as I am, I know you want to make it brief. I just want to welcome all of our distinguished visitors that we have with us here in Oklahoma City once again for the National Finals Rodeo. We are very fortunate and we are very proud that these people have elected for the sixth year to have this wonderful presentation for our city. Of course, we today is another one of the very memorable days that we have had in Oklahoma City on many occasions. It seems that we have the dedication of one fine article, institution, building, or something in Oklahoma City, and before we know it, we have another one. But we are deeply ingrated, uh, grateful to the Kilpatricks and to Mrs. Payne for this wonderful edifice uh, directly behind us, and of course for the, for the piece of sculpture which is enclosed in that building. We are very delighted, of course, that we have the trustees of the National Cowboy Hall of Fame once again with us. They have been here, I think, enough times over the past few years that they're almost uh, citizens of Oklahoma City. I don't think that they are able to vote yet, but maybe we can work that out, Mr. Ackerman. We have a very distinguished visitor with us also, and I don't want to preempt his introduction but while I'm here at this time, the great senator from Texas will be introduced later. However, at this time, while I'm on my feet, I think that he should have a higher honor than being a senator. So, Senator John Tower, I would like to make you an honorary mayor of Oklahoma City. Along with this, uh, Mr. Tower, means that you have to come back to Oklahoma City at least once a year to be sure that your city is being running, run properly. Once again, thanks very much for the wonderful turnout. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman, and you all certainly are welcome to Oklahoma City once again, and do come back many times. Thank you. Mr. Dean McGee, please. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. When D uh, Dean Crickle had a little trouble convincing uh, Mrs. McGee and myself that the end of the trail was a worthy project for the center, because when we first looked at it, it was badly in need of repair. Uh, however, in his usual convincing way, he made the sale, and we are very pleased he did. Leonard McMurray and Cesar Contini have done a great job in restoring the statue. We are looking forward to seeing the bronze replacement, end of the trail, presented in Visalia, so title to this work can be cleared, and the memorial and all parts of this project can be fully completed. The end of the trail in the New Payne Kirkpatrick Memorial will enrich the growing importance of this fine heritage center. 
Mrs. McGee and I wish to congratulate the Kirkpatricks and Mrs. Payne for their very tremendous and fine contribution. Thank you. And Mrs. John Kirkpatrick, please. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Since this is the day of women's liberation, John's let me make the brief talk. And uh, uh, so I want to say I'm so happy to be associated with uh, Mrs. Payne in this honoring of uh, uh, Laura Gardner Frazier and her husband. <laughs> Let's see, what was his name? <laughs> James Earl Frazier. We are so happy to be here, and I'm happy that my daughter and grandson are here to see that uh, this vision of uh, Western Oklahoma and, and the 17 Western states uh, will, will be here, we hope, in the future for the young people to see what our forefathers went through. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mrs. Kirkpatrick's daughter and her grandson to stand. I believe they are in the audience somewhere. Christian, where are you? Okay. And Mrs. Payne, please. Senator Tower, Congressman Bob Price, my partner, Mr. Kirkpatrick and Mrs. Kirkpatrick, Mr. and Ms. Dean Craigle, and all of my friends. I just, um, I'm not going to say very much because I can't. You could can all see that I'm overwhelmed. This is the highlight and the high spot of my life. One of the most enjoyable six or seven months that I have had working with the wonderful people here at the National Cowboy Hall of Fame has been one of pleasure in every way. I have been kept informed of the building and I have been over, as I promised I would, I'd come back to see if it was being done to suit me. And I, it was, and I came back to see. <laughs> and everything has just been wonderful. Now, to talk about the Cowboy Hall of Fame, uh, do you people have uh, three or four hours to wait? <laughs> because uh, it would take me that long, and it just gets started at that. So I'm so glad to be here. So I welcome all of my friends that have come from many miles to join me in this wonderful memorial to my late husband, David D. Payne. I've just been told that the architect Afton Gilly is here. Would he stand, please? Uh, Mrs. Payne, uh, Mrs. Uh, Payne, we like to think that uh, uh, David Payne is here, that he's uh, uh, perhaps looking at us from his ranch in the sky. Uh, I really think also if he could speak to us, he'd say, I'm happy for what you're doing. I, I didn't overlook one man on the podium. Uh, I omitted him purposely. One of our great trustees, uh, one of our great friends, and I think one of our greatest Americans, Joel McRae. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in having the honor to introduce the main speaker, I thought I'd tell you of experience I had some years ago, quite some years ago, when I met this gentleman. I was up in uh, Kern County working cattle with an old friend of mine, 
Hub Russell, who's an honoree in the Hall of Fame, and he said to me, there's going to be a reception. He said, Kern County's going to give a reception from a new senator, an outstanding young senator from Texas. And he said, I think we ought to go in and meet him. So we dressed up and got in the car and went into Bakersfield and uh, there were so many people turned out that we had to walk about two blocks to, from where we could park our car to get into the place. And uh, as I walked in, I had my Stetson and I, and I was wearing my boots as I usually do. And they were, uh, quite a few people were uh, standing around with uh, martinis in their hands and things. And about six women saw me come in and they said, there he is, there he is. And they rushed over. I thought they liked Westerns. They said, you are the senator from Texas. That Stetson hat, <laughs> those boots, you're wonderful. And I stood there with my mouth open, not quite knowing what to say. And from behind me came a voice, a very resonant voice, which you will hear later on saying, well, he may look like the senator, but I am the senator from Texas. <laughs> well, that was my meeting with the senator. He uh, was introduced and uh, told some great stories. Incidentally, he's one of the greatest storytellers I ever heard. I can just remember part of a story, I wish he would tell it, about a backwoods Texan that tried to outrun a freight train. But anyway, uh, after that, he, uh, he made a speech. And I knew after I listened to him talk that we had a new senator from Texas that was going to be around a long, long time. It is my dis It is my pleasure and distinct honor to introduce the outstanding senator from the great state of Texas, Senator John Tower. Thank you, Joel, from that, for that very kind introduction my distinguished colleague in the Congress, Mr. McGee, Mr. and Ms. Kirkpatrick, my old friend Nona Payne, distinguished people who are connected with this great enterprise. It's a great pleasure to be here today and to be a part of this auspicious ceremony. Uh, Joel McCrae was very kind. He didn't tell you how disappointed those young women were when they saw the real senator from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, those of you, I know there are a lot of Texans out in that audience today, and I think you all know that I have been requested by the Texas Chamber of Commerce to inform the audience that I'm precisely one foot below the legal minimum size for Texans. <laughs> I was campaigning up in the Panhandle of Texas one time, up in Ms. Payne's town of Pampa, as a matter of fact, and an average-sized Texan, about 6'6", looked down at me and said, son, you're the awfulest-looking candidate I ever saw in my life. <laughs> he says, I wish there was something we could do to get you elected without anybody seeing you. <laughs> and uh, so I know that we Texans do suffer from a credibility gap. But uh, I am delighted to be here today, and my heart is full to know that I am to be a part of this ceremony here today. My own grandfather emigrated to Texas from Louisiana back during the Reconstruction days. He used to be the greatest bronc buster in the eastern part of my state till his wife made him quit. Then he took up the Methodist ministry and brought the church into the wilderness. And so I 
I feel pretty much at home here today. I think that it's great that our country has benefited from the Western spirit of the American people. And I think it is meet and proper that we do something to remind us of the Western spirit that moved great people to grub a civilization out of a wilderness. I can think of nothing more fitting than Mrs. Payne could have done. I had the privilege of knowing David Payne. He was a man of superior intellect because he was an avid supporter of mine. <laughs> and I always enjoyed having the opportunity to visit with David Payne. He typified the spirit of the West, born in Cook County, Texas, in 1871, he later moved into the panhandle of our state, lived in a dugout over a period of years, accumulated land and cattle, and helped make the great Texas panhandle what it is today. I think that it would be wonderful if all Americans still had that westering spirit David Payne and men like him suffered hardships that this generation will never know and perhaps can never understand. I think that we owe it to those who've gone before us to try to make this a more beautiful country and a greater country than it was when we entered it. I wonder what those great spirits would think of some people of today who can see only that which is bad or that which is unjust in the American society. There is a great deal wrong with our country, but there is so much more, my friends, that's right with it. And in the spirit of those great cowboys that built the West, we should defend the free institutions that we have in this country with all that's in us. Americans enjoy the greatest individual liberty and freedom of choice of any people in the world. And at once, we enjoy greater material abundance than any people in the world. And we cannot afford to sit by idly and see our institutions torn down and replaced with anarchy. We are a free people, and because we are free, we have certain privileges and immunities, but we also have certain responsibilities. And the major responsibility is that we discipline ourselves to act responsibly so that we can preserve our freedoms for all time to come. I think that there is nothing more stimulating than to be in a place like this and to see the reminders of our great heritage, which has been given to us by great men. I think it's a great thing that the Kirkpatricks and Mrs. Payne are doing. And I think we owe them a debt of gratitude standing in this place and seeing these reminders, we can think better of ourselves because we in this part of the country are the sons and daughters and the inheritors of a society in which brave and wonderful men built a civilization out of a wilderness. Thank you for letting me be a part of this today. <laughs> Senator Tower, we're very grateful to you for being here, and I know there's a labor of love on your part. Uh, we have, I know, a number of friends of Mrs. Payne who came here from Pampa, Texas, in the audience. Stand up, won't you please, so we can see who you are?
it's, it's so wonderful to have you here. Uh, <clears throat> another gentleman and his good lady that I would like to introduce is uh, a staunch friend of our Hall of Fame here, and we couldn't live without those friends. And this gentleman and his wife just presented to us last night a bust of Will Rogers, uh, a bust which is <clears throat> made the sculptor sat, had Will Rogers sit while he was still living. And this is a great thing, Mr. and Mrs. Sid Goldman. <clears throat> and a number of uh, our good friends from the great state of Texas here, uh, the Santa Rosa Roundup and the Santa Rosa Palomino Club are here, a number of them. We're delighted to have you here also. And now, Mrs. James Cox, please. <clears throat> and Mrs. Cox's companion is Mrs. Snake. Not only short Texans. <laughs> I would like to say just a few words before we uh, have the benediction. To me, this signifies the end of the frontier and not the end of the Indian. It signifies a new life, a new way that the Indian uh, should follow. The prayer of the four winds will be a representative of protection, prosperity, perseverance, and peace. All-powerful one, let the east wind that blows from the direction of the sunrise blow gently on our nation as each day begins. follow. <laughs> the prayer of the four winds will be a representative of protection, prosperity, perseverance, and peace. All-powerful one, let the east wind that blows from the direction of the sunrise blow gently on our nation as each day begins. South wind, bring the warm rain to nourish our land that we may prosper. West wind, blow strongly. We brace our body and souls to withstand all pressures and are made strong by so doing. North wind, cover the earth with a pure white blanket, that the earth may rest for a while. The sun will soon rise in the east. We will begin again to try again for a better tomorrow. Amen. And now the unveiling of the Payne Kirkpatrick Memorial Plaque by Mr. and Mrs. John Kirkpatrick, Mrs. Nona Payne, assisted by sculptor Leonard McMurray.